check out the previous review here. This post contains spoilers for Supergirl. Before you can have the biggest, gayest wedding National City has ever seen, you have to have the biggest, gayest bridal shower you've ever seen and before that you have to take a suicide mission to Mars with your surrogate daughter figure to save your not-girlfriend and the father you thought to be dead from the White Martians. Them's the rules. Them's also the building blocks that made the foundation for what was the best episode yet in Season 3. Supergirl continues to explore a difficult truth of the LGBTQ community with Maggie's story. Up until now we only knew that she hadn't spoken to her family since she was a teen, but Far From the Tree takes some time to outline the story a bit further. Maggie's father doesn't have the same kind of homophobia that we're used to seeing depicted in media. Instead he's furious that he sacrificed so that Maggie could grow up without the hatred that he did. He doesn't seem to have the capacity to realize that the only place she's currently seeing hatred from is him, but prejudices are complicated things. While Maggie and Alex deal with homophobic issues on Earth, Kara and John head to Mars to aid the Resistance, and to meet up with John's long-lost dad. Myron Johns has been imprisoned by the White Martians for over 200 years while John thought him to be dead like the rest of his family. It takes a few tries, and a step in by Kara, but eventually Myron believes that his son is who he says he is. Once he does, he helps the Resistance acquire the staff they believe they need to defeat the other faction of White Martians. With the staff in hand, the White Martians who brought John to Myron decide that the staff ISNT meant to be in any Martian's hands, and that they will win the war the right way. There's plenty to love about Supergirl, but it truly shines when it shakes off its baggage and illustrates the hope at the core of its title character and tackles a social issue or two. As unacceptable as Maggie's father's beliefs about her sexuality are, he's right when he tells his daughter that the world ISNT has changed as she wants it to be. They're building a wall to keep us out because they think we're all rapists and murderers, is disgustingly timely. Just as timely as a small faction of a race wanting to be better than their forefathers and do the right thing. Far from the tree doesn't skimp on the emotions, either. From Maggie's father putting the picture of her as a child that he's carried with him all this time on the board, to her telling him she doesn't need his approval anymore because she has a family, then all the way to Mars where John remembers his father surprising him for his birthday with the help of his daughters. Amidst all of the joy and the pain of the episode, we see the Girl of Steel continue to find shreds of her hope again. Kara takes a moment to try to understand that experiencing pain doesn't mean she'll immediately understand the pain of another, and finds more of her empathy later in the episode when trying to help Myron realize who John is. Next week, you get a creepy cult Amelia loved many things as a kid, but Harry Potter and Batman were what really brought her into the world of fandom. Her tastes are eclectic and she firmly believes that one doesn't have to choose between Marvel and DC or Star Wars and Star Trek. Charities and well-developed female characters are the way to her heart, and she survives on a steady ivy of caffeine, rants, pixie dust and fangirling. Connect with her on Twitter at Brown Couturer.